Hello everyone, welcome to this Korgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Our Mountains and today we're going to talk about the MM feedback system that is built into the Korgi Engine and that you can use to um, add all sorts of feedbacks and really game feel juice to your game. So um, everything you see right now on screen uh, from the particles every time I jump or land from uh, the particles that get behind me when I run everything that happens when I shoot, everything that happens when I kill an enemy and it explodes, all of that is driven by the MM feedback system. And today we're gonna to see how you can leverage that and how you can extend it. So the MM feedback system, as its name implies, is built to let you trigger feedbacks. So a feedback is uh, anything that lets the user know, your player, uh, that something happened in the game. So it can be a reaction to an input trigger. Uh, the player presses on something, I press on shoot and I can see visually uh, and hear and feel that I'm shooting. Or it can be a reaction to something that changed in the system. Uh, I'm losing health and my health bar moves. I'm um, being proposed a choice and uh, something you know a pop-up opens and lets me know so these are feedbacks the system that i created and that you can find in here uh, will let you do that very easily so it's built in at the core of the engine so uh, every ability so for example dash on every ability you'll see that you can set a start and a stop feedback uh, depending on the ability the way this is triggered may change, but usually uh, the start ability will be called at the start of the ability, the stop ability will be called when the ability stops. So in case of the dash, uh, the start ability is called every time I dash. And let's have a look at what it does. Um, it plays some particles, so that's the ripple that we've seen. Uh, I'll do it again. That's this sort of uh, um, diffraction effect. And then we have a Cinemachine Impulse that triggers that screen shake. Slight. Uh, we have a sound that plays, and we also have a bloom effect that makes everything a bit shinier for a short while. And if you look at the Retro Corgi um, prefab, you'll find that it has tons and tons of feedbacks already set up. So uh, we've got effects for uh, when the Corgi dies, when it gets damaged, when it runs and so on and so on. For every feedback, usually you will want to create a unique um, empty game object, nest it under your character, nest it under your uh, crate or platform or whatever and add an MM feedbacks component to it and then you add a bunch of feedbacks when you're done you can try always and test like this is the test feedback i'm just testing it right now uh, you can also try to stop it and so on. and we're going to have a look at how we can create a feedback from scratch so to create a new feedback uh, what i can do is create an empty game object and call it test feedbacks and I'm going to go and add actually yeah, an MM feedbacks script to it. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, from there, I can, I can define you know, how I want it to initialize. So it can be on awake, on start, or on script, uh, unless you want to drive that initialization with some specific parameters via script. I suggest you leave it to start. And then all you have to do is add feedbacks. Uh, there are 30 different ones. They are sorted by family, I would say. Uh, you'll find some that are about uh, the camera, so Cinemachine and camera. Um, the Cinemachine Impulse will trigger a Cinemachine Impulse, which is uh, an event that lets camera know they have to shake, and it comes with a ton of parameters. Uh, you can define attack curve, uh, decay curve, you can define your sustain time, you can get um, some presets. It's it's quite complete. Every time you add the feedback, you can fold it like that. You can uh, copy it 
to another feedback and you can remove it. Um, then we have haptics feedback. This one will only be enabled if you have nice vibrations uh, installed. Nice vibrations is, is available on the, on the asset store. Um, it lets you trigger haptic feedbacks on mobile devices and it's built in into uh, the MM feedback system. Then we have the post-process uh, feedback. So bloom, chromatic aberration, color grading, and so on. Um, so what these do is that they, they pilot the post-processing effects that you have in your scene if you have some setup. So um, for example, here I have my post-processing volume right here. Uh, you can see I have vignette, bloom, chromatic aberration, color grading, and lens distortion. For each of these, I've added a shaker. So a shaker is going to get an event from the MM feedback and uh, play something, you know, have some effect on uh, its intensity or stuff like that. So for example, if I uh, test my vignette shaker, you can see that I get this, uh, this effect and I can change the curve to anything I want. And now I get a completely different effect. Uh, let's say I go this way now. Different effect. I can change, of course, uh, the duration to do really different things. Um, so yeah, the important part, if you want to trigger MM feedbacks that have anything to do with post-processing, you need a shaker for each of these. Um, and so let's let's give it a try, maybe using, uh, not vignette, we just saw that, but uh, another one, let's say lens distortion. So by default, uh, this is gonna shake for 0.8 seconds. And so if I press play, I get this nice uh, distortion. And I can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, on every feedback, you will see that this part, up to uh, delay between repeats, is um, available on all feedbacks. And so it's, it's a common part and you can do a bunch of stuff. So you can, of course, uh, rename your effect. So uh, I would call that, I don't know, ripple. And now if I have like 20 effects and, and you can have more than one of the same nature, uh, that lets you differentiate them. Then I have a chance. Um, so the chance is in uh, percentage, the amount of chance I have to trigger that effect. So if I, I lower it, by default it's 100, 100, so it always happens. But um, if I lower it and try to play my feedback, you can see that most of the time nothing happens. And every once in a while, if I'm lucky, I trigger feedback. I'm gonna put it back to 100. Uh, then I have a delay. So this uh, this is being baked. I'm gonna put my name back. If I change stuff at runtime, of course I lose it. Um, and the the initial delay is being cached at the start. So if you change it at runtime, it won't work. Uh, this is cached for performance reasons, of course. So now I'm gonna say I want an initial delay of one. Um, I could specify a cooldown duration. So that means that let's say I have a script that tries to trigger this ripple every once in a while. Uh, I can say, no, this is in cooldown right now and you can't trigger this effect until three seconds have passed. You know, So that's an additional security layer that you can put here. And then you can say, hey, I want this to repeat and I want it to repeat three times um, or forever and I want a delay of one second between each ripple. So now if I press play again, I'm gonna test my, my feedback. So again, you can test on every feedback at the bottom of each feedback, you get a play button, or you can test all feedbacks in your list uh, using that play button. So uh, when, when I only have one, of course, it's the exact same result. So I'm gonna press it, you're gonna see a delay of one second and then uh, the ripple being repeated three times. And that's it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep it like that. Um, maybe remove the, the delay and the repeat. And I'm gonna add. 
So of course you can combine uh, post-processing effects. Uh, I could have, I don't know, color grading. So this might be one of the trickiest to, to set up. Uh, there's quite a lot of parameters, but uh, on all of them, or most of them, you'll find a channel. The channel has to match the ID that you'll find on your shaker uh, for all the effects that have like a receiver end, like this one, um, you'll find a channel. So this one has a channel of zero, so I want a channel of zero on my shaker. The cool thing with that is, let's say you have multiple cameras, you've got multiple um, I don't know, flash receivers, you've got stuff like that. Uh, even Cinemachine Impulse, you can say, hey, I'm I'm communicating on that channel, zero. So if you have maybe multiple players um, and want to get this event only for a certain thing, you use that channel. Um, so color grading, I'm, I'm gonna leave the channel at zero. I'm gonna say the duration is uh, one and I don't want my exposure to change. I don't want my U to change. Uh, well, wrong click. Uh, and I want to desaturate instead um, the screen. So I'm, I'm gonna lower the saturation and I'm gonna lower the saturation using, I don't know, this curve. I'm gonna leave it like that. So now if I press play and I test all my uh, feedbacks at once. You can see that um, my screen ripples and I also lose all color over a curve. And obviously uh, if I change my curve to something else and maybe move that way earlier, what we should get as a result is I lose color much faster and then take more time to recover it. So you can play with that and have, have fun with uh, the post-processing. Of course, this requires that you have the post-processing um, package installed. Moving on, uh, we now have the game object category of feedbacks. Um, you can trigger an animation. So you would have to bind an animator, specify what uh, trigger or Boolean parameter you want to animate, set to, to true. Um, we also have enable behavior, lets you drag any behavior and of course um, enable it or disable it, you get a bunch of options. You can flicker a sprite or a renderer, you can instantiate an object, you can affect the position, rotation or scale of a transform, you can turn something active or not, you can uh, have a wiggle, so that will like sort of shake uh, the properties of an object. Uh, you can control a float, control a property on a shader. Uh, you get some camera effects. You get you can trigger any sort of events. So every time I play this feedback, I also want all these events to happen. Just a nice way to uh, plug things together. You can control time. I like this one. Uh, so. Uh, I'm gonna add a timescale modifier and I'm gonna say, hey, I want the timescale to be 0.2 and I want that to last for, I don't know, uh, two seconds. And I want my timescale to lerp, uh, so it, it's gonna slowly reduce the, the timescale and the speed at which everything happens. Uh, and after that, it's gonna go back to normal time. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take my gun. You can see that time is running smoothly and I'm going to trigger all my effects and time slows down and comes back to normal. If I do it again, time is slowed down. You can even see the projectile fly and then it goes back. So this is really a drag and drop. Uh, for this one, you also need uh, a receiver and the receiver in this case is in most scenes of the Corgi engine and that's the time manager. It must be somewhere, yeah, right here on the game manager's object, I have my time manager. Um, what else? You can trigger a light uh, and control its intensity. You can have particles, you'll find tons of example of that throughout the engine. Uh, you can either have some particles play, so uh, let's say you have uh, a weapon and you have a particle system on it for the muzzle flash maybe, 
um, you can just play it or you can also instantiate it at some position. And then we have sounds. Um, sounds are into versions, so you get sound and Korgi Engine sound. If you use Korgi Engine sound, all the audio will go through the sound manager settings. If you use just the uh, regular MM feedback sound, it won't. So now that we've seen how to set up our feedbacks, um, let's have a look at how we can we can trigger them. I'm going to open Corrector Dash, and Corrector Dash, as you can see, handles it's a class that handles the dash. I press on the button and it moves me on a distance, applies a force, and so on. Like all abilities, Corrector Dash extends Corrector ability. So if I click on that, uh, I can see that at, on my base class for all abilities, I declare two feedbacks ability start and ability stop. If um, and, and you'll find that same logic, just declaring public feedbacks, dragging them uh, in the health system, the damage on touch system, uh, the interactive zones. And if you want to create a class that does something, does some feedbacks, all you have to do is declare a public MM feedback. And then you just need um, two lines. Uh, let me find them. Yeah. So one line to play them. No. Sorry, that's the one. One line to play them. Um, name of your feedback. Make sure it's not null. Uh, play the feedback and you can set a position as a parameter useful for playing a sound at a certain location or playing particles at a certain location. And to stop them, again, one line, um, stop feedbacks. And that's it. This is going to play your feedback. This is going to stop your feedback. Uh, and and then it's no more code than that for new um, a new class or, or anything like that. And and of course, uh, play feedbacks and stop feedbacks are public methods, so you can even trigger them using events. Um, let's say I create uh, on my UI, for example, uh, let's say I create a button. So uh, UI button, where are you button? I'm gonna put that button here so I, I can see it in my game. Uh, it's gonna be very ugly, but it's gonna work for what I need. And on that button, on click, I'm gonna drag my test feedbacks. I'm gonna select my MM feedbacks um, class, and I'm gonna say play feedbacks. So now if I press play and I click on my button, I trigger my feedback. So it's, it's really as simple as that. You can have a class called play feedback. You can have um, a, a, an even system like that. You can use Bolt, you can use Playmaker, you can use whatever to trigger this. Super simple. And of course, you can create your own feedbacks if you want. Uh, you can have stuff that is quite specific to your game. Um, I think it's a nice system, saves me lots of time and lets me really bring juice to my game. Uh, if you want to create your own feedbacks, uh, all you have to do is inherit from the uh, MM feedback class and override the methods that you're interested in. I suggest looking at uh, the examples, there are like 30 of them. Uh, look at how it's done, look at the documentation and um, yeah, it's quite easy to do. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.